continue working on your project or open the file named crownpoint04dwg if you need to catch up. Once you have an alignment, a profile and one or more assemblies in place, the creation of a corridor becomes an easy task. Zoom in on the alignment and take a look at it. The alignment is measured and displayed in 20 meter subdivisions. This is useful to analyze how to split the corridor. The bridge ends, based on the assembly with the filled slope, should take place from the beginning of the path at 0 meters to about 0 plus 300 meters. The other bridge end on the right shore and based on the same assembly should take place between 1 plus 160 1.16 kilometers and the end of the path. Between these two points or stations the middle section of the bridge should rely on an assembly without daylights. First things first. You'll build a corridor based on one assembly and then make the necessary corrections. Start by going to the Home tab and choosing the Corridor button. Name it Corridor New Bridge. Make sure it is based on the alignment you created. This should be easy, there's only one in the scene. Also make sure it is based on the profile you created and named Profile New Bridge. Next, choose an assembly for it. Start with Assembly Bridge Ends. You'll make the necessary edits in a moment. Finally, you need to choose a surface to connect the corridor and daylight sub-assemblies to. You can connect to either the original surface or the duplicate you simplified. Choose the original surface to prove that you can still use a surface even if it's hidden from view. If the corridor needs to be split because it is based on multiple assemblies, you would usually keep this option at the bottom checked. However, just to witness the creation of a simple corridor, disable the Set Baseline and Region Parameters option and click OK. After a few seconds, the corridor is created. The whole corridor is currently based on an assembly with a daylight subcomponent. Because of that, a fill region is used to connect the corridor edges to the surface underneath. You need to change that. Select the newly created corridor and click the Corridor Properties button. This takes you to the dialog that would have appeared had you left the Set Baseline and Region Parameters option enabled earlier. As you would expect, the whole corridor is based on the bridge ends assembly throughout, from beginning to end, 0 meters to 1 plus 435.3 meters. You need to split this region in three parts. Right click and select the split region option. The dialog disappears temporarily and you are expected to pick the split points on your corridor. Pick one point near the 0 plus 300 meters mark and another near the 1 plus 160 meters mark. You don't need to be accurate, you're about to fine-tune the adjustments. Once you pick those two points, be careful not to pick any more, right-click to get back to the dialog. You have three regions now where you can define start and end stations and assemblies. Set the first region to work from 0 meters to 0 plus 300 meters. It is already set to the bridge ends assembly and that works in this case. Set the second region to work from 0 plus 300 meters to 1 plus 160 meters. In the assembly column, change the assembly type from bridge ends to bridge over water. The third region should remain based on the bridge ends assembly and stretch from 1 plus 160 meters to the end of the path. Click OK to exit the dialog. You will be prompted to rebuild the corridor. Go ahead and do that. This time, the corridor looks much more like the design you need. In fact, you are almost ready to export your bridge to 3ds Max design 
Your work in Civil 3D is all but over. One last note before you export it, and this is really a word of recommendation. When dealing with a corridor that has multiple regions like this one, you may experience some problems when transitioning from one region to the next. This is not something you would see in Civil 3D, but a phenomenon that often occurs when you import your design to 3ds Max. To prevent any problems, here's what you do. With the corridor still selected, go back to the Properties dialog. Let's revisit the start and end stations. You can see that you use the same values to end one region and to start the next. Make it a habit of leaving the tiniest of gaps between the two and your problems are solved. In this case, you can end the first region at 0 plus 299.99 if the next one starts at 0 plus 300. Similarly, you can end the second region at 1 plus 159.99 if the next starts at 1 plus 160. This tiniest fix is enough to ensure proper transitions when you get your project into 3ds Max design. Click OK and rebuild the corridor one more time. Save your file. In the next movie, you learn how to export your design into a file type that you can use in Civil View and 3ds Max design.